Hi, and welcome to another episode of uh, The Artist Within. I am your host, Casey Bell, and today's artist is Dina Goldstein. Let's get this show started. So what's the earliest memory you have of you um, doing art and realizing art was something you could do? Um, you know, I used to sit and doodle a lot when I was little, and um, one of my favorite stories, which I felt was a real turning point for me, was in school during Christmas time, we were asked to color in Santa Claus. And, you know, I'm leafing through this huge box of like a thousand broken crayons, you know, a treasure trove. And I colored my Santa Claus purple. And I was very excited. And everybody had to turn in their work. And I ran up to the teacher. I'm like, I'm done. And she looked down and she said, Dina, this is purple. I said, I know, I'm really, you like it? Yeah, no, Santa's red. And I thought, no, today Santa's purple. And that's just was a real defining moment for me because that was my self-expression coming through. And I thought, you know, after that, I'm not gonna be coloring in the lines. And I just, I didn't like that I was being squelched to, you know, that was my interpretation of Santa. I liked him purple, so. How old were you? Um, I think I was probably maybe five or six. I was little, you know, at those little desks. I just remember that's like it was odd. yesterday. That a teacher would do that. Yeah. Instead like of today's just, standards. Yeah, no, you know, that wouldn't happen. But yeah, she said, oh, Santa's red. And I said, but mine's purple. I, I like them purple. And she just I, it really stuck with me. So um, I thank her for that because it just kind of drove me forward to be expressive. Cool. So once you started really getting trained, um, I'm sure, as you know, in the art world, not everyone is encouraged to be in it. So what encouraged you to say, I don't care what anyone says, I'm going forth and I'm doing this? Um, I have to say I'm completely blessed to have grown up in an environment where my parents kind of embraced letting me be my own spirit. And I expressed myself through, um, you know, art and I dabbled in, you know, creative writing and stuff like that. And I, I would doodle, like I mentioned before, and, you know, I, they saw my work and they loved it. And so I felt really good about that. And then when I got into high school, I took an art class and, you know, and high school offers those art shows and things like that. And I just kind of kept going and it really became so much a part of me that I had to do it. It's my way of, you know, how I view the world. I take it in and put it back out on the canvas, these, these moments. And I just, I just had to do it. So, and I grew up in an environment where it was okay to express. There was never judgment about, I didn't get the purple Santa Claus at home. I got, hey, that's really cool. You know, so that made me feel really empowered. And how did you start your journey? And did you get... Did, did it, someone tell you how to start the journey of getting into the art world or did you just figure it out? Uh, great question. Let me see. Well, I just started doing and I was experimenting with graphite and pen and ink and things like that. And after high school, I went to college. I did, you know, graduate with a fine arts degree um, from the University of South Florida. It's not an art school per se, but they had a fantastic art department. And when I went in there, they said, well, what kind of art do you want to specialize in? And at that time, I really enjoyed photorealism with graphite. It's just, you know, you could touch it. So um, I kind of focused on that, but nobody told me. I just was kind of feeling my way through it. And then through the coursework, I'm sure you know, you're taking photography and you're taking other mediums. And I remember taking a sculpture class and my sculpture wouldn't stand up because it had to be wood. And I thought, okay, I'm sticking to canvas. Um, ironically, I went through art school and had painted very little. I did most of my work in inks, charcoals, graphites, and things like that. It wasn't till many, many, many years later that I began to work in acrylic. So uh, I just, I was self-guided. Um, I just kind of kept going where paths took me. And when there was opportunity uh, to get involved in groups or show my work, I, you know, I would do that. And how are... I mean, obviously you were strong from the beginning, but I know one of the problems in art is a lot of people say there's a wrong and right way to do art and there really isn't. And another problem is they believe 
once you start a medium, you should stay there and you should never branch out. But I have seen your art and you've branched out to different mediums as far as abstract, you know, portrait. What did anyone ever tell you you shouldn't do that? And if so, how did you overcome that lie that you're supposed to just do one thing and stay there? You know, that's a really great question. And I, I've had periods of time where I've struggled with that. I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I should really focus on one thing. I should be, you know, every artist has their thing that they do, whether it's a certain genre or medium or style. And I, I kept, my frustration was that I was so not pigeonholed. I kept just, it, you know, if you, if you look at my work, it's just, you'll see Western, then you'll see ethereal, um, you know, it's just kind of all over the place because it's what inspires me. And that could be a story somebody tells me and I have a vision and I go home and I put it on canvas, whether that's a collage or it's a repurposed piece of wood that I found. I just, um, nobody told me I couldn't do anything, but I felt like I put the pressure on myself to kind of find that niche for myself. And I don't know if I did it yet, but um, I was working heavily in digital for a while, which I love because you, you have that huge palette and you can kind of cross pollinate, but then I really gravitated toward acrylic and I love them both. I mean, I do mostly acrylic now, but um, it's just through self exploration and I just find that I'm inspired. So certain inspirations beget certain materials so my father was a big inspiration for me. He was into horses and things like that. So for a while I did a lot of Western stuff and that would be gnarled up wood and I would use um, vintage metal parts and things like that. And so just playing, I just, I like to enjoy and play and just try to, if I restrict myself, not good. <laughs> so I have to kind of go with it. So I like that, I really do. So. Every artist has something in common, whether they're a writer, singer, dancer, fine artist, is that they work in two places. They start their work at their home and then they bring their work to a gallery or a festival or whatever. But when March 2020 set in, every artist had to find a new way of their second location of work. So what have you done to kind of rethink how to present your art and have you by any chance in some small way gone back to going back to our galleries and things of that nature? You know, it's a great question because we all find ourselves uh, through reinvention during this crazy time that we're in. Um, actually a year ago to a couple of days ago, I was set to do a huge show with a presentation and, you know, my work was gonna be displayed um, and of course we couldn't do it because it's a large gathering. So I thought, okay, you know what? Greater good is always important. So I just kind of sat on it for a while. And then I thought, you know, people still want the experience of being able to attend something like that. And now more than ever, people need their spirits uplifted. That's through music, the arts, whatever it is. So um, I was asked to create a virtual show so I dabble around with like, you know, little movie making and stuff like that for a hobby. So I created a virtual exhibit and it's actually on YouTube. Um, I'll, I'll send you the link if you want to share it. Um, and it's a virtual exhibit of what's at the exhibit and an explanation about how I feel. And that is obviously we love to see work in person, but um, right now you can go to the Louvre online. Um, so the only limit is you know, if you can get to a computer or some electronic device, you can still have an experience. It's not required to be in front of it. And I, I wanted people to be able to have that experience and not be pigeonholed to having to physically go there. So at some point that show will happen. So I've done that. Um, I share with my, my clients and, and followers by posting or uh, sharing pieces. And, and as I uh, I'm not a huge social media person, but when I do uh, create a new piece, then I'll put it up. So that's kind of how I've navigated that. And I stay in communication with people. So, and I keep painting. <laughs> so. With that said, are you working on anything in particular at the moment? Uh, you know, I just um, am in the midst of a piece. Um, and again, I'm starting, I'm trying something that I haven't done. I've done, it's a landscape, but it's a different kind of a landscape. And it starts out fairly realistic, but as I continue to go and play, 
it gets it morphs into something different. So I'm working on what was a traditional landscape, but I'm I'm going back in to add elements that are maybe a little bit more surreal, like flowers that you maybe wouldn't see, or you'll see in some of my landscape work, there's different colors that collectively might look like a fall scene, but if you look at them, you might not see crazy turquoise out in a field of flowers. Maybe you would, I don't know. But so yeah, I'm just kind of playing with that right now. Awesome. So my last question for you today is if you had the opportunity to have lunch and conversation with any artist that has inspired you, whether they be dead or alive, well-known or unknown, who would that artist be and why? Oh my gosh. You know, I've seen that question in my artist magazine and every time I see it, I ask myself that and I hope that I have an answer for you. I used to love Toulouse-Lautrec. I liked his, his really loose style. Um, I don't have one, is this make me a bad artist? I don't have one particular artist that I follow. I just kind of follow what people are doing. And as a collective, it moves me. Um, isn't that awful? I'll sit no. down and talk to any artist. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> well, I don't talk to anybody. I just, I love to see what people are doing. And there's so much inventiveness. Everybody, you know, you think about it, everybody's coming from a different place. So you have this exponential world of wonder. And I'm constantly awed when I'm out there, you know, looking at people's work. And I just, I just appreciate what I see coming from people. Any kind of spark of creativity always, always is a source of inspiration for me. So, so that's a lot of people to talk to, right? I'd have to start today and I'd never get done. <laughs> you're, wa you're watching the, the art the artist. You're watching the artist within. all the time we have for you today on the artist within thank you so much for joining me and to our artist guest dina goldstein thank you so much for stopping on by thank you have a wonderful day have a wonderful week